Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to model natural selection. In this video, I want to model how natural selection can work in the real world. So let's picture this area on your screen as an environment, and here are some animals running into the environment. Uh, let's just refer to these circles as mice. Now notice that some of them are red and some of them are gray. This is a variation that takes place uh, in the genes where they produce two different types of fur. Now in this environment, of course, it's kind of hard to see those gray ones, whereas the red ones stick out pretty well. One of their predators is the yellow-beaked crow. And the yellow-beaked crow loves eating these mice. And so as it's feeding and flying around, notice it's taking a lot of these red mice. But it doesn't always get red mice, sometimes it gets the white mouse. But the, because the red ones are sticking out, they are the ones that are going to get eaten. The white ones have a little bit better chance at surviving. Now at the beginning of this, there was an equal number of red and white mice, 50-50. These survivors get to reproduce. And notice, they each reproduce individuals with the same variation that they do. And so they're going to move around in the environment as well. If we wanted to count them all up, it's roughly about a third of the population is red, two-thirds is gray. So here comes our yellow-beaked crow, and it's going to start eating up as many mice as it can. It gets a lot of the red ones. Is it always going to get a red one? No, sometimes it finds a white one. That, just because they have the favorable variation doesn't mean that they're going to survive. But they're going to have a greater chance at surviving because the crow is eating the ones that it happens to come across. And most of the time, those are the red ones. So here's our survivors. The survivors get to reproduce. And they're going to move around the environment. But notice how many white mice we have now. It's roughly about 80% gray and 20% red. So the gene pool is changing. This is what evolution is. It's a change in the gene pool over time. Eventually, given enough generations, that red gene might be totally eradicated from the population. They may only have the gene for gray fur at some point. So you can see in this environment, having the red fur color puts these mice at a disadvantage. Doesn't mean that they're going to get eaten, but it increases their chance. They have a less chance of surviving, less chance of reproducing, whereas the gray ones, greater chance at surviving. But what if we change the environment? Now who's got the advantage? Now it's pretty hard to see those red ones, and the gray ones are sticking out. So you can see that the environment is what ultimately determines what is a good variation and what is a bad variation. That will help to determine what sort of chance they have at surviving and passing those traits on to their offspring. I hope this explained a few things for you, and I'll see you in class.